Hey there, thank you so much for deciding to spend just a couple of your minutes with me here today, taking a look at a Docker container uh, that was kind of reintroduced into my memory after my last video. Uh, in that video, uh, we talked about, of course, deploying a Docker container, uh, and, and there was kind of a, a bit of back and forth in my brain with myself here, here staring at the camera, talking about using a Docker run command versus a Docker compose uh, setup for deploying a Docker container. And I talked a little bit about a, a website called Composerize, and then somebody brought to my attention something called IT Tools. So hopefully this video will be pretty quick. What we're gonna talk about today is uh, the IT Tools Docker container. We're gonna skim through some of my favorite of the more than 80 apps that are built into it, uh, and then we'll take a look at how easy it is to get this installed. So if we take a look here at my desktop, we can see that this is IT dash tools dot tech. Um, and, and of course, like I said, this has got like 82 apps in it currently. Um, and they've got everything from like crypto, which is like cryptography, not cryptocurrency. Uh, we've got uh, converters for date and time and integer and Roman numerals. Uh, we've got web stuff for encoding URLs. Uh, we're getting device information, uh, slugifying strings, uh, all kinds of stuff over here. We've got image and, and video stuff for a QR code generation, whether it's for like a URL or a Wi-Fi, which I've actually used in the past, very cool stuff. Um, documentation uh, for like GitHub cheat sheets, which I need, I need that. Um, <laughs> random port generators, if you're not ever sure what port you should randomly pick, let the app do it for you. Um, Docker to, or sorry, Docker run to Docker compose right there. You can just drop a Docker run in there and it will convert it but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, we've also got converters for date and time, integers, uh, color converters, all kinds of good stuff there. Um, JSON to YAML, YAML to JSON, Tomals, all kinds of converters in here as well. Uh, encoding and decoding URLs, escaping HTML URL parsers. Uh, we, oh man, I scrolled all the way to the top there somehow. I talked about a lot of that already. Here we go, network stuff, IPv4 subnet calculators, address converters, range extenders, MAC address lookups, all kinds of good stuff in there. We've got stuff for math, whether it's a math evaluation or calculators or percentage calculators, chronometers, or in other word, a uh, stopwatch. We'll come back to that. Uh, lower MIPSM generators, text, statistics, emoji pictures, all kinds of really, really good stuff in here. Of course, I'm going to encourage you to go check this out on your own to see which of these tools uh, will best fit your needs, something that you might implement in your day to day. And if you don't want to install it, of course, you can just go to ittools.tech. But that's, of course, not why we're here. Um, let's actually take a look at their GitHub repository real quick. Scroll back up. Oh, come on, there we go. So here is their GitHub repository. Again, this will all be linked in the video description. Uh, you can go look through their code. Uh, if we scroll down, we can see that some of this has been updated just in the last few days. So really, really happy to see that. Um, you know, they've got useful tools for developers and people working in IT. Have a look. That jumps back over to the website we were just looking at. Um, if you've got questions or you're not sure about something, they've got an issues section that they will encourage you to look at, as will I. And they're always looking for new tools to implement. So they do have the ability to submit a feature request if you want to add more tools to the tool bag here. A couple of different ways to self-host. I say that. It's the same Docker container, but just hosted in two separate repositories, whether it's hub.docker.com or uh, or GitHub. I know some people have, or well, I know, obviously they know too, I have no affiliation with this project. But there are people who have um, discerning tastes, I suppose, and have a preference on which, uh, which service they prefer to use for whatever the reasons happen to be. So you can either pull up directly from Docker or from GitHub, completely up to you. Ultimately, the same thing uh, is just a matter of where you're pulling it from. They've also got uh, solutions for CloudDron, uh, TP, and Unrate, if you want to use any of those. And then, of course, more, more stuff down here for you to take a look at at your leisure. But I tell you what, let's jump over to my instance of IT tools, uh, where I've got a few different things bookmarked, favorited, whatever. We'll take a look at those, and then we'll take a look at how to get IT tools installed. So, so simple. So, here we are. This is my instance. We can see that's a local IP address for me. So we've got a color converter here. So uh, you can just, you know, go over here and say, I want, I want to know what that blue right there is. There's, there's your, your hex. It's shown in two places there. RGB, HSL, HWB, CMYK, or, or the color, the name, blue. 
Um, if we come over, our, our favorites are listed right over here at the top uh, of our, our of our left menu there. Case converter, I only saved this one because I think it's funny. You know, they, you put in your string, there's lowercase and uppercase and camel case and capital case and constant case. And down at the bottom, mocking case. I love mocking case. Um, I, I love that it's built into this brilliant stuff, but that's, that's literally the only reason I saved it here was for mocking case, uh, text to NATO alphabet. So if you hear people talking on, like on, on cop shows, you're not sure what they're talking about. Like you could say, you know, DB tech would be, uh, the NATO, uh, phonetic alphabet would be Delta Bravo Tango Echo Charlie hotel. That's DB tech in the NATO phonetic alphabet. So that's in there. I really dig that. Um, again, the Wi-Fi QR code generator, um, you know, if you wanted to do that, um, you could just, you, you just put that in there like so. Um, and then it will generate this where you can then print that, hang it on your wall or whatever. So when somebody comes over, they can scan that with their phone and connect to your Wi-Fi without you having to type in their, the, the, your Wi-Fi password for them. I've actually used this. I think it's a great way to give people access to your guest Wi-Fi. I, I specify guest there for security reasons. Uh, get cheat sheets. Again, um, I've, I've got such a small amount of knowledge about how to actually properly use Git, um, but all of all of the cheat sheet stuff you might need for Git is right there as well. Um, they've got a, a ch mod calculator, so you know if you needed uh, to to mod or ch mod something, you know you can you can figure out you know who needs what permissions and get the proper ch mod uh, number for that particular set of permissions, and then right there. Right there's the, the 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 command that you would run. Of course, replace path with the actual path of what you're trying to ch mod there. And then of course, Docker run to Docker compose. Uh, I think this is great. Uh, like I said, this was actually what brought this IT tools back into my purview was somebody, uh, one of my Discord mods brought this up um, because I had mentioned Docker, or I, I had mentioned Composerize in a previous video and he was like, hey, hey, you should look at this. And I was like, oh, I already have, but thanks. Thanks for bringing that back up. Um, so yeah, that that is IT tools. Again, I encourage you to go dig through it yourself. There are so many different tools in here uh, that we could spend 20 or 30 minutes just talking about the tools available. So uh, with that said, let's take a look at how easy this is to get installed in Docker. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna come back to their GitHub repository and I'm gonna scroll down to uh, to the self-host option where it says from Docker Hub. I'm just gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna come back over to here and paste. Why didn't that copy? That was dumb. That should have copied. Fine, we'll do it. We'll do it the manual way. There we go. So there is our Docker run command that we copied from GitHub. And right here is the Docker Compose that it generated. Now, something to keep in mind here with the newest version of Docker Compose, uh, we're not using version numbers like we can see right here. We're not using those anymore. For whatever reason, they decided to get rid of them. Um, so you don't necessarily need to copy that. But below that, we've got our services. That's part of the Docker Compose. The first and only service is IT tools, the image. Again, because we're pulling this from Docker, uh, we don't need to have the Docker URL in front of that. If we were pulling from GitHub, there would be a G H R, what is it? G H C R dot I O in front of that. That's what I'm trying to say there. Um, but because we're pulling it from Docker, we don't need that. Uh, we've got our ports right here uh, that it runs on natively, which is 8080 on the external side and 80 on the internal side. Uh, if you need to change 8080, do that, but only change the 8080. Don't change the colon or the 80 after it. That's again on the inside of the container. That's what the container is looking for. Don't mess with that side. We've got a restart policy even less stopped. Um, and that's just if, if your computer, your server reboots, crashes, whatever, when it comes back up um, with, re, uh, unless stopped, the container will automatically try to come back up on its own unless you uh, you had it shut down prior to the reboot or whatever. Um, so if it was up before the reboot, it will come back up. If it was off before the reboot, it will not come back up automatically. So next we've got our container, our container name, which is just IT tools. Um, and that's it. There is no, there's no storage for this because there doesn't need to be. Nothing is, nothing, there's no persistence needed for this. It all just runs in real time uh, in the container. So there's no storage for it. So uh, let's grab, let's grab this like so. We're gonna come back over here to Portainer. Uh, I'm already in my stacks, but let's, let's come back to here, right? Here we are, we're on our homepage. We can just click on stacks right there. Take us right back to where we just were. Click on add a stack. 
I'm gonna call this uh, IT Tools 2, because I've already got this running. That's what we were just looking at. And I'm gonna change my port to 9090. That's how we're gonna access that. Uh, and then I'm just gonna put in a name up there just because Portainer needs one. So that's it, that's all we have to do. We can scroll down, we can click on deploy the stack. This is gonna reload just, just that fast. And here we are. Um, before we click on that, let's actually take a look at our image for that though. Uh, for IT tools, man, these used to, it, it's not giving me a size. It used to give a size right there, what the heck? Anyway, uh, apparently it's not very big, um, but let's come back to our stack. Let's open up our IT tools right here and click right there. And just like that, we are up and running. One thing to note about this um, is that whatever you favorite in your, whatever browser you're doing this in, if you then go to a different browser, your favorites won't be there because that's all stor stored in local storage. Because again, there's no persistent storage for this. So your favorites will be on a browser by browser basis, unless you manually favorite all of the same things in every browser that you open up. So that's it. That's that's how easy it is to get IT tools installed via Docker and have access to more than 80 tools at your fingertips very, very easily. So hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, it would mean a lot to me if you gave the video a thumbs up. Uh, maybe consider subscribing if you're interested in this kind of content. Uh, if you wanna support the, the, the creator of IT Tools, the, the very least you could do is go follow the project on GitHub and give it a star. Uh, GitHub creators, uh, developers, I guess, I say creators, GitHub developers get special perks when they, once they start reaching certain star levels. So if you wanna help them out, go give them a star. If you wanna help out the channel here, you can become a channel member or a patron, which I actually recommend over channel memberships. Patreon is cheaper and you get all of the same stuff as channel memberships, uh, which is uh, usually early access, but never ever any ads in any of my content over on Patreon or uh, channel memberships. So uh, of course, none of that is obligatory. That is just if you can and you want to. But I think with all that said, I'm gonna wrap this up. I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. And I'll talk to you in the next video.